Hey everybody, CBQ from Greensy here, back with another edition of How It Works, a series on how the uh, system and product that we built for auto striping is working. So today we're going to be talking about the physical controls that are added to our current fleet of mowers to enable auto striping. So when we spoke to our customers and rode along with them and mowed lawns ourselves, which was pretty tough, we learned that landscapers don't want another gazillion dollar machine, although we do love going to GIE show to look at all of them. What they told us was they said, you know, what would be great and what would be amazing is if I had a robotic worker who always showed up and was always on the mower, ready to take over for me once I've told it what to do. That would be incredible. You know, kind of like autopilot or cruise control, you know, Tesla has this thing. And when your customers say something that like that, you listen, and that's what we did. So before I talk about how our system works with all the mower controls underneath, I wanna share three design principles at Greensy. And the first is that we believe that the best user interface is no interface. While you love a good app and we love writing software, our favorite ones just work behind the scenes. I'm thinking about my Nest thermostat that really never have to touch, it just kind of works. Uh, and I'm thinking about other things that just literally just there's no interface like I get a notification that it's gonna rain That's a great great app. Uh, I don't want to have to configure a bazillion knobs or panels I just need to get work done. So so less is more Second principle is is that we don't want to reinvent the wheel uh, a lot of good developers uh, Are good at that and I think it was um, Picasso or maybe it was Davenport Adams who said a saying where he said good artist copy great artist steal, maybe misattribution, but we've always been shameless about stealing great ideas. So if it works, why reinvent the wheel? And the third is that we believe in iteration. So we believe that something that's good enough that works certainly beats the pants off of something that's perfect that never sees the light of the day. And while that's very easy to do with software because you can keep upgrading as our software does every day, it's hard to do with hardware, but you'd be surprised at how easy it is nowadays with our 3D printers and ordering off of Amazon, thank you Amazon, we love you, um, you know, to be able to iterate on hardware again and again and again. I think a lot of people look at things like devices like the iPhone and they go, well, they never launched something that wasn't quite perfect, but what they never see is the hundreds of iterations that they went through, cardboard, uh, you know, weight, uh, you know, shapes and mock-ups and V1s and V2s. I think too many people design perfect systems and just never put them out there to improve. So caveat in point, iterate. With those three principles, you know, this is how we design. And while I could show you a bunch of iterations that we've gone through, I'm gonna show you what we're using right now for our current uh, customers. And I'm sure when we look back in a few years or maybe months, I'm sure it'll be look simpler and easier and less reinvention and more uh, design integrated into the mower, okay? So uh, here it is. I'm gonna uh, throw it up here so we can start talking about it. Now, um, this is the current uh, OCP. Um, and uh, where this sits on the mower before I sort of get it, this was the best picture I could find of it. Uh, the rest of them are in the field and you can't really see. This is pretty zoomed in. So it sits right there. Um, and now let's go back to it and I want to kind of talk through uh, the different uh, uh, operator control sort of stations here. So the first, um, uh, you know, um, you'll, what you'll notice right away is that there's no LCD screen, there's no configuration, there's no setup. We've actually copied uh, how automated CNC machines work. So if you've ever had a CNC machine, a CNC router will do, you know, sort of this motion. Um, and so that's what we're trying to go for uh, because it's a very similar process when we're looking at a lawn and we just want to automate the striping of it. So um, first thing you'll notice the power button now uh, with the key and now that won't be on production models but that's a good way for us now to turn on and turn off our auto striping system manually we'll probably hide this one down below in future versions the next switch over that you're, you're looking at right here is uh, override um, and that is um, uh, just for us right now to be able to override the control systems and say hey we want to put it in manual you can always grab the controls and take over but this is just to force it and know that it's in there uh, e-stop. This is pretty standard uh, on industrial machines that are automated. Uh, this is a latching e-stop button. You press this and the mower stops safely. This is a lightning fast hardware relay. It's not connected through software in your system. Um, it has to be this way for safety purposes and we have multiple of these including a wireless one. Uh, these are redundant and required um, and, and just you know, we'll keep doing these for sure. The two next to it, uh, the resume and pause, allow you to uh, resume after you've either paused the mower or to start we, we, you know we again we simply copied how industrial machinery works what you don't want to ever do 
is unlatch e-stop and have the mower sort of take off. What you really want to do is unlatch e-stop, clear any sort of faults or anything that you've done, and then safely resume, and then within a few minutes, excuse me, a few seconds and, and some automated noises uh, and sounds and lights, you'll be able to see it keep going. Um, and pause is, again, just a simple way to pause the operation. It's less harsh than an e-stop. You're telling it the software like, hey, give me a second. I either need to do something, whereas e-stop is very quickly will kill uh, any sort of movement and uh, blades. Now, these status lights uh, are meant to provide information to the operator about the health of the mower's auto striping operations. Are all the sensors working? Is the system ready to go fully functional? Now, we may uh, reduce or increase these, but for right now, um, there are about six things that we really need to go sort of turn on. So this is nice when you turn it on, they sort of come on one by one, and then when they go fully live, you know that you're ready to go. Um, and they also can indicate other things. So all of these are connected to a microcontroller that's running hardened code that handles lightning fast responses. This microcontroller does talk to our main compute unit and it's done at a very fast status rate, but it's also much safer to have a microcontroller running that, that its own loop with these safety features such as e-stop and, and uh, you know, pause and resume. And, and it's also much better and much cleaner to do that. Um, you know, again, like for, for every reason that microcontroller were to reboot or turn on, turn off, it doesn't have to restart, it doesn't take any time, it sort of instantly is running the main loop code which is detecting for is there a start or stop uh, and is all the, all the, are all the status still going. Um, and that's just done for safety reasons. So um, with that, we're gonna stop there and I'm gonna leave it to our future talks to talk about how it's connected inside the mower, um, ruggedization, other aspects, but hey, we'd like to know, what else would you like to know about? Please let us know in the comments, um, we've got other Lots of areas to explore to show you how our product works. Uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching and uh, see you all next time.